While we are waiting, if you guys want to make sure that you have something to use as a palette. So if you don't have a palette like this at home, you can use a piece of wax paper works really well or like a disposable plate or even if you have um, like an old Tupperware container like the lid from like a yogurt container or anything like that would work great as a palette. Styrofoam um, meat tray works really well. That works as well. Um, and then you should each have, I guess, I think maybe a few of you didn't make it over to the library to get your supplies. Um, but if you are following along on just a blank canvas at home, if you have flat brushes and um, a rounded brush or a pointy brush, those are the two we're gonna be using. And if you wanna take a few minutes too, um, if you have some fun household items to use, I have bubble wrap here. You don't have to use bubble wrap. It can be anything that you have at home. I have Q-tips as well. And I also have an old toothbrush that I'm gonna use for painting. Um, if you wanna get extra creative, I did see today someone for their tree branches um, had broccoli at home and they actually used the top of broccoli um, to paint their leaves on their trees. So that's another fun one. If you have some veggies at home, you can actually use them as painting tools, which is kind of cool. All right, I'm gonna set up my screen here. So you won't see my face while we're painting, but if you guys do have questions as we go along, you can feel free to unmute. We have a function at the bottom here with, it says reactions. You can do like a hands up, if you need to, to chat with, or sorry, raise hand if you need to chat with me. Um, or you can just unmute. I know Zoom is like super new for a lot of people and it, it can be a lot to um, figure out. So you can also just unmute and just say, hey, I have a question. Or can you show me that step again? And I'm happy to help you guys out. Are you gonna be able to come back on screen in case we get some more people in? Yeah, I can come back on screen. Okay. I'm just making sure my angle's good. Okay. Just bump this up a little bit. There. That should be good. And if you are coming in with your own paints, the colors that we're using tonight are black white, green, and blue. And if you have other paint colors at home that you want to experiment, this is totally your painting. So you can add as many colors as you want to make it your very own unique creation. So the other thing you might want to have on hand is just some paper towel or tissue or um, your brushes are wet and need to be dried off. Do they need a little thing of water? Oh yeah, water to wash your brushes off too. I should have put these in the instructions. That's okay. It's our first time. Mm -hmm. we'll have this down pat just in time for everything to be in person again. <laughs> yep. All right, I think we'll get started here. Okay, so what we are going to paint tonight, so this on your canvas here that you picked up um, is actually a big sticker. So at the very end of your painting, what we're gonna do is peel that off. So any of the steps that we're doing, we don't have to worry, we're gonna actually paint right over top of the sticker. And then once the canvas dries at the very end, we'll peel the sticker off to reveal our red foxes. So our first step that we're going to do 
um, is we are going to take our flat brush. So if you wanna grab that and we're going to start by painting our grass. So I'm gonna dip my flat brush into my green paint. And I am going to do my grass. I'm gonna do a little line on each side of my canvas so that I know how far up I'm gonna go. So I'm going part way up the tail, all the way across here. Just like that, and I'm going to paint all underneath there, even on top of the sticker green. And you might find, depending how thick your paint is, is that a little bit of that background color might want to show through. And what I'm going to do there is I'm going to do a couple coats of green. So I'll do the first coat now, and then once it dries, I'm going to go back in with a second coat. So once we have our green painted, I'm going to wash my brush off my water here, give it a really good wash off, make sure all of that green paint is off of our brush. And if you have a paper towel or a Kleenex or something to just make sure you wipe your brush off after, it will just make sure any excess paint and extra water that's in your brush will be gone. So our next step is going to be our sky. And also, if I am going too fast with any of this, you let me know. Um, and I will slow down just a little bit for you. So for our sky, I'm going to do something neat with my brush. So I'm still using that flat brush that we used before. And in our sky, we usually have a few different colors of blue, right? We don't when we look outside, we don't usually just see one tone of blue in the sky, we see a few. So what I'm going to do is dip part of my brush in the blue paint, just like that. And then the other side of my brush, I'm gonna dip in white paint. So then my brush is gonna look something like this. So then the rest all the way up to the very tippy top, we're going to um, paint our blue and our white. So the way I get those different colors of blue is I keep brushing back and forth and you can see there's some white showing some blue and some lighter blue in between that's created by mixing the white and the blue. When you run out of paint, just dip your paintbrush back into the blue and the white again. And you're just going to brush all the way across. And we're going to paint our full rest of our background this way. And do they, to keep to this, yeah. do they need to keep the blue and the white on the same sides of their paintbrush? No, you can flip it around. One of the big things, if you want the kind of gradation of color, is you just want to make sure you don't over blend it. But going back and forth still should give you that few different colors in there.
And you might notice too that as you go, some of the little parts of the sticker, some of that orange is still showing through. So I'm just kind of tapping my brush in those little nooks and crannies to make sure that I cover it. Really important that we don't have any of that orange showing through because when we peel that sticker off, we wanna be able to see that fox reappear. It's kind of doing a bit of a disappearing act right now. That's looking very pretty. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep blending it in. And if you like one color more so over the other, you can add more either blue or white to your brush to make sure you're getting kind of the style that you want. Kind of looks like a breezy day on my canvas. If you have extra paint colors at home and you're wanting to add some other tones in there too. If you have a lighter or darker blue, you can always do that with the same technique. Once we start getting our sky in there, we're gonna play with some of our household items as well to give some different techniques. And I'm just making sure I go all the way over to where the green ended so that I don't have any of that orange or white of the canvas showing.
And that is your background color. So what we can do once we have that is we can wash our brush off again. So washing it, really scrubbing it off really good. We wanna make sure all of that blue and white paint is off of there. And then this is where we can use some of our household objects if we want to put in some clouds in the background. For mine, and I can sample with a few different household items, but what I was going to start with is I have some Q-tips with me. So I want to do some nice clouds. So I'm going to dip my Q-tip into white paint. And I'm going to pick on my canvas up in the sky. I'm going to go up near the right near the top because this is going to be above our um, trees when they eventually go in there. And I'm going to use my Q-tip almost like a brush and I'm going to just stipple. So I'm just kind of making little dots and I'm going to make some little clouds in the sky. I'm just dabbing my Q-tip in. And when I run out of paint on my Q-tip, I just dip it right back into my paint on my palette and go back to dabbing it on my canvas to make a nice cloud shape. And you can get as creative as you want here too. Sometimes, I don't know if you like to do this at home, but sometimes on a nice spring day, if there's clouds in the sky, I look up at the sky and I might see something in the clouds. So if you wanna do something like that, maybe your clouds are heart-shaped or Maybe you see an animal in your clouds. You can do that in your sky as well. Another cloud here. That gives a really nice cloud shape. Looks fluffy. Yeah, it does look fluffy. Other things that you can use at home, if you don't have a Q-tip, but you wanna use a similar technique, is you can actually use the back of your brush and dip that in white paint as well. And you can then stipple the back of your brush on your canvas. That one I find I have to just make sure that I dip my brush back into my paint a little bit more often. The back of the brush doesn't soak in as much paint. You can do clouds that way as well. Um, if you have cotton balls at home, I don't have cotton balls here tonight, but if you had cotton balls, you could break off a little piece and you could do really lovely clouds with your cotton balls. And you could do those in a few different ways where you could wrap the cotton ball on the end of your brush and do the same stippling technique um, or just have just the cotton ball by itself. So those are a few different household items that you can use for clouds. I'm gonna do one more little cloud. I'm gonna make this one a little bit bigger. All right, so once we have our clouds in the sky, I'm going to give you guys a few more minutes to do yours. You might still be working on them.
but our canvas might be a little bit wet. Mine's a little bit tacky right now. And this is where we're gonna take a little bit of a break. We wanna make sure that this paint all here, all of the blue um, is gonna dry before we start putting our birch trees into um, our scene here. Um, because we, if we put our birch trees in too quickly, um, the birch trees will actually blend with this blue paint and we don't really want that. So we're gonna let it dry. So if anyone needs to take a little break, stand up and have a big stretch, go to the bathroom, anything like that, um, please feel free to do so now. Um, I see that I have another participant coming in to the room. So maybe while you guys are just finishing up your clouds and taking a break, I'll get our other friend here started once they come on. You're just connecting to audio. Hi, how are you tonight? Might not be might not be working. All right, so if you are just coming into the room, we have just gotten started. Um, feel free to get yourself set up. So what we have tonight, if you picked up your package from Michelle at the library, um, you should have black, white, blue, and green paint. And you should also have a flat brush and a rounded brush. Um, the other thing I think that was in your package was some bubble wrap. So you can save that for later. And if you have Q-tips at home, Q-tips are handy to have on hand. That's what we did these lovely clouds with. Um, also other fun household objects we were discussing were toothbrushes um, and even something fun, like if you had broccoli in your household, those make really good marks on canvases for leaves once we get um, into painting our tree. And what you'll wanna get started with is for the bottom part, You'll have a sticker on your canvas. That's what that box is there. I'm going to paint right over top of the sticker as you've seen here. You're going to do the same thing. And you're going to start with green on the bottom. And then I did a mixture of blue and white on my top. So you can join in whenever you want. And feel free if you have any questions, you can either type it into the chat function um, or you can chat with us here if your mic is working. Um, we are recording this session because we do have some people that are going to um, paint their canvases in an after play of this. Um, so if you do not want your face to be seen in the recording, please just know that you can keep your video off. So welcome. Okay. My canvas is still just a little bit wet. I'm actually gonna lift it up and I'm gonna kind of blow it in the wind here. Just shake it back and forth to help it dry a little bit. I know sometimes I used a blow dryer if you really want to dry it quickly, but you oh, have to not put the ones, blow dryer too close. Yeah, with these ones, I would really caution if you do use a blow dryer, make sure it's on the cold function because if it's on the hot or warm function of a blow dryer, the sticker may melt. I do so, think of that. Yeah, that's okay. It, it does work. So if you have a yeah. cold uh, a dryer that can be on cool, um, they do work great. It's just when it's warm, it might melt your sticker. I got a little bit um, antsy to finish a painting once and I, I put my hair dryer on it and melted my decal right off there. <laughs> okay. Maybe may wait one more minute. Mine is just tacky. I don't know how about uh, how yours is doing. If anyone does know how to do the um, function for the reaction, you can give me a thumbs up um, or you can unmute for a moment um, and let me know if you're ready to start the next step. All right, 
So we're going to do trees next. And the trees that I had in the sample painting, um, they're a birch tree. Um, so I am going to be using again the flat brush. We're mostly using the flat brush here tonight. Um, not so much the pointy brush, just a, a little bit near the end for the leaves and if we want some fine details. And if you were with me for doing the sky, I'm actually gonna do somewhat of a similar technique. I'm going to dip my full brush into white paint, just like that. And then I'm going to dip just the tip of my brush into black paint. Birch bark trees, they usually have that nice white and black and gray kind of markings. Um, and they, you see them often like peeling sideways, the bark on a birch. So what we're going to do is we're gonna start making the trunks of our birch trees. I'm starting just off to one side here. This is where you get to get creative again. You can put as many or as few birch trees in there. Know that if you put a birch tree where your fox's head is, it will still work. Um, what will happen is when you peel the sticker off, the birch tree will actually go behind the fox, which is kind of cool. So the way I do a birch is I have that little bit of black and white on my brush, and I'm going to start by making a wider mark at the base here, and that's gonna be the start of my trunk. You can see where it has that nice little bit of black showing there. I'm then gonna move up a little bit, and this time we wanna make sure that we're keeping that black always pointing down. And I'm gonna do another little mark and see how it's a little bit smaller there. I'm gonna continue doing that all the way up, making it a little bit smaller as I go. You can see I'm gonna need a little bit more paint. So I'm gonna dunk it back into my white with just a little bit of black on the tip. And I'm gonna keep going up until my tree is as tall as I want it to be. And see how I'm just making it a little bit smaller as I go. And near the end, it should come to a bit of a point. And I have mine curved a little bit just to make it kind of an interesting organic shape because no tree is perfectly straight. And then you might be asking that the tree doesn't have very many branches. So we're gonna do some branches. So you're gonna do a similar. So I dipped my paint back into the white and the black and I'm going to pick a spot where I want my branches to come off. And I'm gonna do the same thing. Just little strokes all the way up and that gives you a tree branch. So you can put as many or as few branches onto your birches as you would like. I'm gonna do another one here. You can see sometimes when you dunk your brush in, it gets a little bit more of the black on there. That's okay. There's lots of different colors in the birch bark. I'm just doing extra little branches on there. And that gives me a very leafless birch tree base. So I'm gonna do a few more in mine. I think I'm probably going to do one in the middle there because I wanna kind of see what it might look like to have it go behind the fox. I'm gonna do one next to it. Again, starting at the base, nice wide trunk. And as you go up, start getting smaller and smaller. And we're making those branches out. And for the really thin ones, I'm just kind of really lightly pressing my brush onto the canvas. That's my next tree. And then I'm gonna do a couple more and in my painting here. Do 
Going maybe to the other side of the box. They really look like they're three dimensional. Uh, yeah, a little bit, eh? Mm -hmm. They don't look flat. It's an easy way to kind of get that look of a tree. And I find as I go to, they become more and more interesting because the colors start to blend a little bit more. Here's my next one. Probably looks funny on the screen. My hand probably is kind of awkwardly in there, but I am painting upside <laughs> down to be able to make it right side up for you guys. All right, I'm gonna do one more in the corner here. So there are my four birches. And like I said, you can do as many as you want if you just want one big birch in one corner. Maybe you want more than four, you want five or six. You can really make this your own. Once you do have the back, uh, the beginning parts of your trees done, I am just washing that brush off again. And I'm gonna give you guys a few minutes to get your trees in there as well because you might still be working on them and I know we do have a few new people in the room as well that might just be getting caught up. Let it dry a little bit. I kind of wish that I would have kept one of those so I could paint with you guys. <laughs> You'll have to make, you have to use your Cricut and cut out a yep, I will. box for yourself. They really look three-dimensional. You can almost see the branches coming out or going back into the painting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's not that hard of a technique to do either, which is kind of, it's kind of cool. It's very accessible no matter what level of painting you're at. And these stencils are fun too. If people like doing these stencils, we can do another paint group like this as well. I, where I work, people have a lot of fun with the different stencils that we do. Yeah, and uh, anybody that's doing it, um, if you could send us your paintings so that we can show Emily how, how well you did and the rest of you know, gray, gray highlands might like to see them too. We'd love to see what you come up with because I'm sure it'll be a lot different. Because any, any of these kind of programs you end up with, everybody's looks totally different. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna, I'll, on mine, I'm gonna go nuts and use a bunch of different techniques to show you guys leaves. The first one is, again, you can use the Q-tips. Um, so with the Q-tips, what I like to do is I start by using just green on my Q-tip and I just dab the Q-tip onto the branches to start filling in the tree. And if you want kind of a two-tone look, you can then use your white paint as well, kind of layer it in there with the green paint. And what I do before I dab that onto my canvas is I just on my palette kind of give a few little dabs there just to mix it in just ever so slightly. And you can see 
that I'm getting some highlights of leaves. If you look at the trees outside, spring's coming, you can start to see trees never usually just have a flat one-toned leaf. Depending how the, the sun is hitting everything, create some shadows, just the tones of the leaves might change over time. So this is one technique for creating leaves. The next technique I'm gonna show you is with your bubble wrap that you have. So for my bubble wrap, what I do is I actually use my flat brush and I paint the color onto my bubble wrap. Is that again, on the bubble side? It's on the bubble side, yeah, good point. Yeah, I paint it with the bubble side facing up. If you have the bubble side facing down, you're not gonna get too much texture there. But bubble side facing up, I paint that on there. Again, because leaves aren't always the same color, I'm just using a little bit of the white. If you have other paints at home, you could use other tones of green. Um, sometimes people use a little bit of yellow in with their green as well. It will give you kind of a more of a lime green as it mixes. So once I have that painted on there, I'm going to now flip that upside down and place it onto my canvas and just gently, because you don't want to pop the bubbles, gently press those bubbles onto your canvas. And then I'm just lifting and moving it. You can see that it's going to take a couple layers, but it gives you another cool effect for leaves. And you can layer all sorts of layers of that bubble wrap technique to really build up your leaves. And then again, if you want to get creative with veggies, I saw today a really cool painting technique that someone was using, actually broccoli, and they just dunked the top, so the tree part of their broccoli into paint, because it already looks like a tree, and then they just dabbed that onto their canvas. Um, and it actually makes really beautiful leaves. Again, I'm just, I just keep refreshing the paint on my bubble wrap. And then I'm just going back in and pressing it onto my canvas and I'm moving it around as I go. This will give a really textured look as well. You can see I'm gonna zoom in. So that's what the bubble wrap looks like for your leaves. And that, that is good. what the um, Q-tips. So the third one that I have here is I have an old toothbrush. Um, I always keep all my old toothbrushes because you can do tons of cool painting techniques with them. So what I'm gonna do is I dipped my toothbrush into the green paint. And I'm just kind of dabbing it off a little bit because there's a lot of excess paint in there. My mom's probably going to think that I'm going to do something different with this than I'm actually going to do. She's probably going to think I'm going to spray the paint everywhere, which is also really fun. And you can totally do that. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to stipple the paint on. So there's lots of, lots of things you can do with paintbrush or with uh, toothbrushes as paintbrushes. You can do fun ones if you're doing like a galaxy painting or a night sky or one where you want it to look like it's snowing, you can actually flick the bristles all over and it will scatter the paint. But you can also make really beautiful leaves. And again, if you have a couple colors uh, or shades of green or colors that you want in your trees, maybe for you, you're not doing a spring painting. Maybe you like fall and you wanna add some oranges and reds in there. You could do that. Just be mindful if you get too close to your fox with, with an orange or a red, um, it might blend a little bit into your fox. It's okay too. The fox will look like it's hiding. It will look, yeah, even more like it's hiding. So this one, it's kind of similar to your bubble wrap, a bit more textured. I actually think for mine, I'm gonna keep working with the toothbrush. I like that effect that it's giving. 
And then I have some variety too with the different textures I've created. I've done my clouds and the Q-tips and then now I'm giving a different texture out. Did you put a little bit of white on it? Yeah, you did. Yeah, I put a little bit of white on there as well, just to give like a lighter green color mm -hmm. as well. And you can either mix that on your palette into a lighter green or just layer the paint. I just kind of dip it in the green and then dip it back in the white and then back in the green again. And then as it brushes onto the canvas, it makes it just a little bit more 3D. There are my trees. Okay. So once our trees are done, really the last few things that are left to be done is if you want to um, put some sprigs of grass, this is where that pointy brush comes in handy. My tree trunks, they're dry now, so I can use use my little pointy brush and I'm just putting that into the green paint and I want it to look like there's little wisps of grass so I'm just doing little gentle brush strokes going up this way also if you find where your sky meets your grass it's a little wonky like mine is it actually kind of hides that also just makes things look a little bit more interesting. You could also turn some of these little bits of grass into flowers in your, your ground. If you have some other paint color, like flower color at home, you could use your Q-tip or the back of your brush and just do little tops for some flowers on there. And that's my grass. And I, I have another paint. So just if anyone does have at home, I'll just give a little demo of that. I have some yellow paint on hand. So I will just show everyone in case anyone wants to do that. So I just dip my brush into my favorite flower color and just do a little dot. And it kind of looks like tulips. So if you do have extra paint or it looks like dandelions a little bit too, you do have extra colors of paint at home, you could do this as well. I didn't even think to do that till now. If you had a real, really well sharpened pencil, you could use that if you want really tiny yeah. dots and you can make hyacinths. There we go. So that, is the painting part. Now it's time to wait a little bit, let it dry, um, be more patient than I'm about to be because I am going to show you guys what it does look like and what the process is appealing. Um, you do want everything up here to be really dry before you peel the sticker off because you don't want any smudging. So I am going to wait a couple minutes and then what I'm going to do is show you how to peel your sticker off and your little fox is going to reappear onto your canvas. I'm looking forward to this. So again, I'm just gonna wave my canvas in the air here for a moment just to help it out, help it dry a little bit quicker. I hope Janelle and Ryan, you're enjoying this. 
And I would love to see your paintings when you're done. Okay. Mine is still a little bit tacky, but I'm gonna just be really mindful of where I'm starting to peel it up. So kind of the best um, advice I can give is our grass was the first thing that we did. So it's going to be the driest here. So what you're gonna do is you want to kind of, if you have nails, just kind of put your nail into the sticker. If you don't have nails, if you have, um, what am I thinking of? Tweezers at your house that someone could let you use. You could use that to help you peel the sticker off. And your sticker might not come off all in one piece. Hopefully it does. That looks really neat. And I'm gonna peel this off. So we got a tail showing of our fox. So there are a couple pieces to the sticker. It's not all one piece. Now I'm gonna just gently peel this one off. And yours probably will come out a little bit crisper than mine. I didn't use as much of the gel medium. Stick my sticker down. Oh, we almost got the whole fox now. Almost, there's just one more sticker in there. I'm gonna have to take a look. There we go. So that is our little fox. And you can see that my trees just kind of fall to the background. After. That is your final product of what you'll get. Pretty cool. Right. If anyone has any questions, you can let me know if you're still working on it. I'm going to leave this up here for a few, few minutes so that you can catch up. Hopefully you enjoyed this type of painting. And if you did, let Michelle know um, and we can maybe do another one in the summer. Maybe in person by that. That point, or maybe I'll just be the one on Zoom, who knows? <laughs>